Here we are at the next installment of our project and today we are going to do the uh, row of horizontal sashing below the first set of blocks. Here I am at the main menu, design sew quilt, edit sew existing, here is my project and just like before I am going to align the saved project off to the side of my real quilt. So it says touch a reference point on the screen. I'm going to touch this one over here on the right. Continue. And now I'm just going to move my machine over to the left, way off the quilt. I'll come back to the center. Uh, so now we are going to, the first thing we have to do is mark the sashing block. So add edit block add block, standard block, mark on quilt. And I don't need to uh, mark the little cross, the crosshairs in the center of the cornerstones today because the stitching ends there from the vertical sashing. So I'm just going to move my machine along. I'm going to lower the needle. I'm using my little remote to mark the points. And I'm starting where the vertical sashing ends on the left hand cornerstone, that's my first mark, and I am running along the seam line between the block and the sashing, and I'm making as many points as I need to to accurately show the block on the screen. So I'll scoop right along. When I get to the vertical sashing, I'm going down to where the stitching stops, marking that point back up to the seam line. Let's see if I can do it all from this side. Down to where the stitching stops. Oh, I have to scoot in front of the camera. Back out to the seam line. see my seam curves there so I'm marking a lot of points into the stitching now out to the bottom of the sashing between the sashing and the next block this time I don't need to shoot into the center of the cornerstones because I've already done that so I'm just going along straight following the seam line as closely as I can again I'm going to scoot in front of the camera Go. almost done stop there and then I'm going to touch the button that says close block finished do you want to add another block? no so I'm coming back to the centre now so that you can see how I modify the pattern ok the next button I need to touch is add edit pattern copy pattern and I'm going to go zoom full so I can see my quilt map at the side there. Now all the horizontal sashings are identical so it really doesn't matter which one I copy at this stage. So I'm going to copy, let's zoom in so you can see it a bit better. Okay, I'm going to copy this one, this one. These are all individual patterns so I have to copy all six. They're not combined. Okay, continue. And there's my copies just offset slightly in red. I'm going to move them over, but now I need to pan over so I can see my block. Move them up. Let's zoom in all the way here. Okay, move. I'm going to move this start point so it snaps to that point of my block, which is where the other stitching ends. Now I'm going to pan along and see how the pattern sits. Okay, that needs adjusting. That needs adjusting. And this needs adjusting. Let's zoom out. Because at this point I'm going to stretch all of them together. Let's pan over a bit. Zoom off. So I'm touching stretch. It says touch the anchor point of the pattern. 
that's this point which I know is in the right place. As soon as I touch that, another message pops up and it says, now touch another snap point of the pattern. And I'm going to touch this end one, but I'm going to zoom in first so I can see that I'm doing it, moving it accurately. This one, and I want to snap it to there, to the end point. So I'm going to pan along and have a look at the patterns now. Okay, I can see, because my sashing is not straight here, that this, it would stitch way too close to this seam line. That, that's too much of a difference. So I need to adjust this. Let's pan along some more. I need to adjust this. I need to adjust this. That needs adjusting. This needs adjusting. Okay, let's do some more stretching. So I'm going to zoom out slightly because the first ones I'm going to adjust are just these two. They're all red right now. I only want these two to be red. So I'm touching select. It says select the patterns to modify by touching one of their points. This one and this one I'm going to modify. Continue. I'm going to use stretch anchor this one. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to grab the end and make it snap to the block, the pink. I'm going to zoom out so I can see the next two. I'm going to hit select. I'm going to choose this pattern and this pattern to modify. Continue. First thing I'm going to do is move this start point so it snaps to that end point. Then I'm going to use stretch. I'm going to anchor that one because it's in the right place. I'm going to pan over and I'm going to move this one so that it snaps to the block. One more time. Let's zoom out. Select this one and this one. Continue. Zoom in. Move this one into place. You stretch, anchor that, pan over, zoom off, and move that into place. Right, let's zoom out a little. I'm going to pan some more to see. Okay, this needs this still needs fixing. There's too much space here. Not enough there. Uh, that one's not too bad. Let's pan over. That one needs a little bit of adjusting. That one does too. That one's okay. That one's okay. So let's go back to the other end. Let's start with the other end since those patterns are already selected. Here we are. Let's turn zoom off now. So now I am going to hit my double arrows because I want to find shape shift. And here is shape shift. Let me touch the screen. You can just see the shape shift effect circle there. That's the blue shape. That's too big. I want it to be smaller. So I'm going to touch size and I'm going to reduce it down. Let's try four inches. That's better. So I'm going to move it into position. And then after my delay, it's going, the, that circle is going to turn green and then I can move the pattern. So let's move it here. Stop moving. It's turned green. So now I can shift the pattern over a little bit. That looks better. Okay, let's go pan over here. This one I think needs to come down the other way a little bit. Oh, I've got to turn zoom off. Just a tiny bit, that's all it needed. Okay, let's pan over. Now these ones are blue, so nothing will happen when I touch the effect circle here. See, nothing is happening. Let's it turn green. Nothing's happening because these aren't selected. So I need to touch select this one, make it red, continue. And it's gone back to my shapeshift screen. So I'm going to grab here. I want to bring that down a little bit. Pan over again. 
let's do this one, but I need to select it. It's not red. Select this one. Move. Turn the zoom off. Zoom it down a little bit. Okay, let's zoom out. Let's have a look at all the others. Let's have a look at the whole thing. Okay, that doesn't look bad at all. So I'm going to go finished here. That doesn't look bad at all. Let's zoom in one more time just to check. Yeah, pan over. Zoom in and out and pan as much as you need to to make sure it looks exactly how you want it to. Yes, that's not bad at all. Now, why did I only use shape shift? Let me go back to modify pattern. Let's just touch this and we'll go back over here. Why did I sh use shape shift instead of distort? It's because I didn't want that point or that point to move. I only wanted to alter the center of the pattern. If I use distort, it puts a box around the selected pattern or patterns and I can use, I, I can use either the sides to move the pattern around or I can use the corners to move the patterns around. What it wouldn't allow me to do is see if I move this, which enlarges the center there, it's moved my points and I didn't want it to do that. Let me do undo, undo, put it back to where it was. Um, so that's why I chose shape shift instead of distort. I will choose distort for a pattern that fits inside a block and I want to make it fit that block. Distort is great for that, just as we did uh, last time. Um, when you want to move just a small part of the pattern, shape shift is a better choice. Now what about magnet tool? Why didn't I use magnet tool? Well magnet tool is great if you want to smooth out things or round out things. Let's zoom in here. Um, my magnet tool I've selected and it says mode attract. So when I put my stylus on the screen it will attract, it's a, this will be like a magnet and all the lines inside the effect circle will be drawn towards the stylus. So if I put it here, oh that's a great big effect circle, I don't want it that big. So I'm going to change my size, let's put it down to one inch. Okay, that's better. So now when I touch the screen, I'm waiting for it to turn green, see how the lines are being attracted to my stylus? If I change my mode to repel, when I touch the screen, the lines will move away from my stylus. See how they're moving away? Go to undo. If I make my effect circle size pretty small, let's do half an inch. Oh, let's do it even smaller. Let's make it quarter of an inch. Uh, using a really small one like this allows me to smooth out things. So I'll bring it here. See how if I move that along, see how the, how the line is changing and smoothing. Let me hold it still so you can really see what's happening. So that's magnet tool, undo. Um, I will rarely use magnet tool for this kind of thing. If something, if I have used shape shift and it's made a, a part of the pattern that's supposed to be round, if it's made it an oval shape or another, another odd shape, then I'll use magnet tool to make it round again. But otherwise I'll use shape shift. Let's go zoom out. When I just want to move part of a design, I'll use Shapeshift. For a whole pattern inside a block, then my first, the first thing I'll use is Distort. So that's finished. I'm finished there now, finished. Let's go zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Now I'm not going to stitch this today, but like I did with the first set of horizontal sashings and the first border, I would stitch starting in the center and going out then coming back to the center and stitching out that way. If you start at this side, the fabric's all going to move up this way. It's going to be drawn up to the left. So by the time you get here, that may not match up with your previous stitching. So that's why I like to start in the center, go that way, start in the center again and go that way. It minimizes the fa fabric draw up. So having done that, and last week's video we stitched the block patterns. I think you can do this sashing, you can do the next row of blocks and vertical sashings, 
then you can do the next horizontal sashing and then you can do the last row of blocks and sashings and when we come back for the next video we will be doing the bottom border. Thank you.